The current study is on the evaluation of positive reinforcement procedure for treating escape maintained aggression behavior. This study was done by Caitlin Brazeau, Mariella Castro, Megan Fultz, and Isaac Nzuki. Escape maintained problem behaviors are common in instructional settings. One way of reducing these behaviors is by using functional based treatments. However, these treatments have several limitations and are not suitable for all individuals. An alternative to using functional based treatment procedures is using positive reinforcement without extinction. Individuals with developmental disabilities are often exposed to instructional situations that may become aversive and thus establish escape maintained problem behavior. Various aspects of a task such as length or difficulty can lead to problem behaviors for some learners. When this occurs, a frequent reaction from instructors is to let the child take a break. This can lead to an increased problem behaviors in future when the individual is presented with task. One approach for treating escape maintained aggressive behavior is by using functional based treatments. A functional analysis is used to determine the reinforcing contingency of behavior. In this case, escape and then an aspect of maintaining contingency is manipulated. The most common function based treatments for escape maintained behavior are differential reinforcement, escape extinction, and non contingent escape. Although these treatments are common, they have several limitations that may that may make them unsuitable or undesirable to use. First, teachers may implement escape extinction procedures with lower procedural integrity, which may lead the escape maintained behavior being resistant to extinction. Second, escape extinction procedures can lead to more aggressive behaviors due to extinction first. Third, providing frequent breaks during instructional tasks may not be optimal for learning or practical. An alternative way of addressing the issues of escaping teen problem behavior while avoiding the limitations of using extinction-based treatment is by using positive reinforcement without extinction procedures. Why would we use positive reinforcement? Positive reinforcement procedures are associated with less reactive behaviors. Positive reinforcement can be easy to implement, and although the procedure would allow for escape, positive reinforcement would reduce the frequency of escape maintained behaviors, thus reducing the amount of time spent outside instruction. The purpose of the study was to evaluate the use of a positive reinforcement without extinction procedure to decrease aggressive behaviors maintained by escape and increase the amount of on-task behaviors. Specifically, the study assessed whether positive reinforcement in the form of preferred edibles when made contingent upon task behavior would decrease the amount of aggressive behaviors during instructional sessions. For the study, three kindergarten age children with profound developmental disabilities and a history of aggressive behaviors participated in the study. All attended the same special education classroom at an inclusive elementary school and were selected because of a history of aggressive behaviors occurring during instructional activities, which impeded their ability for learning. Cole was a six-year-old male diagnosed with autism. He was, in, he was capable of following instructions and was able to communicate through limited vocalization. Nate was a five-year-old male with profound intellectual disability who had no expressive or receptive language skills and is capable of following instructions. Ava was a seven-year-old female diagnosed with autism. She had limited communication skills but was able to follow instructions and periodically displayed aggressive behavior when given a demand. All sessions were conducted in a classroom area that included a table, chairs, and materials for instructional learning, which included laminated pictures of a flower, dog, spoon, basketball, and a cup for matching. Dependent variable and data collection. Our dependent variable was defined as aggression and on-task behavior. Our aggression was defined as slapping, hitting, pushing, and throwing items at the instructor. Our on-task behavior was defined as completing or working on completing task demands. Data were collected on aggressive behavior and on-task behavior using a five-second partial interval recording procedure during 10-minute sessions. Pencil and paper were used for collecting data during the 10-minute sessions. Trained data collectors observed the sessions by sitting next to the table where the sessions were conducted. Inter-observer agreement was scored using a mean count per interval procedure 
This was calculated by determining the average percentage of agreements between counts reported by the two observers for each interval. The mean inter-observer agreement obtained 33% of the conditions was 93%, ranging from 82% to 100%. Treatment integrity was the independent variable. Positive reinforcement without extinction procedure was recorded on data sheets by the observer during 30% of the sessions in the study. Integrity was 100% throughout the study. As stated earlier, procedural integrity was used for 30% of the session. The list used in these sessions is as follows. The experimenter has all the materials on the list. The experimenter introduces each exercise as specified in the procedure. The experimenter follows the scripts of the exercise. The experimenter gives appropriate tasks through the session. Prompts were given to help complete those tasks, and reinforcements were given once tasks were completed. Social validity was assessed at the end of the experiment. A questionnaire similar to Langthorne's and McGill's was used, but with some modifications. It was given to the parents and teachers of the children to assess the social validity of the functional analysis and the treatment procedures. An order of rating the forum took was classified as strongly disagree, disagreed, undecided, agreed, and strongly agreed. The questions being looked at were, one, I feel this assessment was successful for the participant, two, I feel this assessment affected the child's aggression in a positive manner, three, I think the child experienced distress during any point of the procedures, four, overall I had a positive reaction to this assessment, Five, I believe this assessment is likely to result in permanent improvement in the participant's aggressive behavior. For the study, a multiple stimulus without replacement preference assessment was conducted. Seven edible items were assessed. Skittles, gummy bears, potato chips, M&Ms, Mike and Ikes, Smarties, and crackers. A selection was defined as putting an item inside the mouth. Prior to the beginning of each session, the children were given the opportunity to sample each of the items. At the beginning of the sessions, the items were lined randomly on the table and the children were instructed to pick one. After a selection was made, all the items, except for the selected item, were represented again in a randomized order and the children were again instructed to pick one. If the children did not pick an item during a trial after a 30 second period, the items were represented again. If an item was not selected, the trial would be marked as having no selection made. This procedure continued until there were no more trials to run. Data was taken on a data sheet designed for recording multiple stimulus format preference assessment data. For the functional analysis, we used three distinct conditions that included attention control, escape condition, and control play condition that we'll be going into detail. First, in attention control, the children were given moderately preferred items and left alone to play. The instruction, instructor looked away and only attended to the children through a reprimand whenever they engaged in aggressive behaviors. Next, in escape condition, the instructor told the children it was time to work and presented instructional stimuli in the form of matching tasks until the children engaged in aggressive behaviors, in which case the children would receive a 30 second break. Finally, in the controlled play condition, preferred items were made available to the children and the instructor gave a non-contingent attention except when aggressive behaviors occurred. The tangible consistent consisted of access, to a preferred item for a one minute period before the session and then during the session contingent upon occurrence aggressive behaviors. A withdrawal design was used to evaluate the effects of positive reinforcement without extinction on aggressive behaviors. The baseline condition was identical to the escape condition of the functional analysis. For the treatment, high preference edible items for on task behaviors plus escape for aggressive behavior was used. In this condition, the stimuli determined by the multiple stimulus without replacement was to be highly preferred, was to be given contingent upon task behavior. Before the session, the participants were instructed, if you stay on task, you get a piece of your high preferred item. The instructor delivered the preferred item randomly through the session whenever the children completed a task after being prompted. Whenever the participants would engage in aggressive behaviors, they would then get a 30 second break from the activity. Results indicated that aggressive behaviors decreased when using positive reinforcement without extinction during instructional activities. 
Results also suggested that positive reinforcement without extinction was effective in increasing on-test behaviors. The next three slides indicate the participants' results during their baseline and when treatment was imp implemented. This graph represents Cole's aggressive behavior. During baseline, aggressive behavior showed a stable and trend level and occurred an average of 87.6% of intervals over five sessions, and on-task behaviors were also stable in trend and level, occurring an average of 33.8%. When treatment was first implemented, aggressive behaviors decreased at an average of 17.4%, and on-task behaviors increased at an average of 73.2%. This graph represents Ava's aggressive behavior. During baseline, aggressive behavior showed a stable trend and level uh, and occurred an average of 91% of the intervals over five sessions and on-task behavior was also stable in trend and level, occurring an average of 33.4% during the first baseline. When treatment was first implemented, aggressive behaviors decreased an average of 17%, on-task behaviors increased an average of 73.8% of intervals over five sessions. This graph represents Nate's aggressive behavior. During baseline, aggressive behaviors showed a stable trend and level and occurred an average of 90.6% of intervals over five sessions, and on-task behaviors were also stable in trend and level, occurring an average of 31.8%. During treatment, aggressive behaviors decreased an average of 19.4% and on-task behaviors increased an average of 67.2% of intervals over five sessions. This study suggests that using positive reinforcement contingent upon on-task behaviors reduces the percent of intervals in which aggressive behavior occurs. Furthermore, the escape component of the treatment did not affect the ability of the positive reinforcer to increase on-task behaviors. The implications for this is that positive reinforcement procedures could be used in place of function-based interventions with, its, with extinction components if it is found that extinction procedures are not suitable because of the extinction burst and reactive behaviors as mentioned by the Fisher study and Wacker. This study extends the study done by Lally in 1999, showing that positive reinforcement without extinction procedures can be as effective, if not more effective, than procedures that have an escaped extinction component within them. In addition, the procedure used in the study appears to be as effective as FCT procedures as shown in the study by Fisher and Piazza. One of the limitations faced in the study was that the same task was presented throughout. This could have to control for variables that might influence responding, such as changes of difficulty or length of the tasks. This, however, introduces the possibility that the child could have satiated with the task and increased the rate of aggressive behaviors, or that the task had become easier over repeated presentations, thus decreasing the amount of aggressive behaviors. These might have been the reason for the initial high levels of aggression behaviors in the first condition and lower levels in the second condition. Next, another limitation the study faces is that the study was done isolated away from the other children and activities in the classroom. Most classrooms and homes, however, may not have isolated areas. Thus, the applicability of the results of the study to a normal classroom are quite questionable. In addition to control for effects related to having different instructors, the same instructors were used. Some future research that could be used for this study is enhancing the is enhancing the future external validity. There are five meaningful ways that the future research might enhance this. First, future research may show that the intervention works during regular classroom activities, that it works with different instructors, different settings such as at the home, that it will work with tasks as varying length and difficulty, and the different schedules of reinforcements could be used. Next, across settings, different settings and different instructions. Two future areas on this topic would compare the function-based treatment of DRA and escape ex extinction with this treatment. If it is found that positive reinforcement is more effective than the mentioned treatment, the practitioners might consider switching as the above procedure did not produce any reactive behaviors. 
Another future area of research could look at replicating the results of the study already with more participants and more participants whose aggressive behaviors are maintained by other functions. This slide indicates the references used during our presentation.